In this video, I'll be discussing seven false teachings that are being preached in the church today and ones that you should stay away from uh, if your church are, are preaching these false teachings. But before I do, I just want to recommend uh, two books that I've, that I've read that are about false teachings and progressive Christianity and uh, this whole idea of New, new Age theology. Uh, one of the books is uh, Another Gospel by Elisa Childers. Uh, she has a podcast called Elisa Childers, and she, you know, has interviews with with other, you know, Christians and apologetic stuff. Uh, it's really good, good stuff for somebody that's trying to search out uh, or more answers about their faith, about apologetics. And um, but in her book, she talks about progressive Christianity and how she used to be a progressive, or she went to a progressive church, and she realized like, whoa, like. They're teaching some dangerous, dangerous stuff, and they're saying things like, you know, the Bible was made by man, and how can we trust it? It's just this old book, like this is not inspired by God. And she goes into depth of like how she's able to defend what God's word is and the, the truth behind God's word. So I definitely recommend her book. And also another book that I'd recommend is this book, Awaken Alive to Truth by John Cooper, um, the guy from Skillet from Cooper Stuff. Cooper stuff. Yeah, I know. I really like his podcast. Uh, but in this book, he talks about in the world today. There, I mean, you can't find truth. It's, I mean, we're we're kind of lost in this world today. In 2021, we're we have no idea what's going on. Like everybody has their own truth. Like if you tell, if you ask somebody how they feel about something, they're gonna tell you how they feel. Or like if you tell them, what is your uh, thoughts on you know same-sex marriage or what's your thoughts on abortion or what's your thoughts on gun rights like they're going to tell you how they feel and they're not going to tell you what god's word uh says and that's something that we gotta realize is that's kind of scary because if we just go based on how people feel then we're gonna, we're in a dangerous place so this book is definitely a book that i i consider you guys read it's a super short book um also elisa Childers, another gospel is not that long as well they're about 200 pages less than 200 pages i believe and and they've they help i mean i'm a simple dude and these are the first two books i've ever read completely chapter books and i mean they were easy for me to read and i definitely recommend you guys uh check those out i'll leave the i'll leave links in the description below for the those who want to get the book it helps me out if you use those links because then it gives me a commission so that i can uh keep making more videos um and maybe one day not have to work a second job I don't know. Let's just get in the video. I'm going to read a verse for you guys. Hebrews 5.14 says, But solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So this show, this verse kind of tells us that we need to be in God's word constantly so that we are able to, to look out for what is right and what is wrong. I mean, because if we don't read our read our, uh, read God's word and a pastor tells us that this is right, then we're going to believe him. But if the word doesn't say it's right, then it's not right because what God's word is true and nothing but the truth. So, I mean, we need to be looking out for for these things. But I'm going to list seven of the uh, most talked about false teachings in the church today um, for you guys. And I'm going to start off with uh, number one, which is this false teaching of Christians have to speak in tongues in order to be saved. And I've heard a lot of people say that they went to churches like this where they have to speak in tongues in order to be saved and this is this is far from the truth and this is not what the bible speaks about we can clearly see in romans 10 that we need to confess with our mouth and believe that jesus died on the cross and rose again from our, for our sins that it's not anything else but that like we like that's what secures our salvation very very clear what the gospel message is if we add anything to the gospel then it just perverts the gospel like we can't just say Oh, you need to believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again and choose to follow him. And then you have to speak in tongues in order to know. Because not every Christian is going to be speaking in tongues. I mean, we obviously see in, uh, that Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians 12.30. About Christ not all Christians are going to be speaking in tongues. So we shouldn't worry about if, we're, if we can't speak in tongues. Because not a lot of people will speak in tongues. Not saying if you speak in tongues, you're not a Christian. There is Christians that can speak in tongues. Um, I don't really know too much about the whole speaking in tongues thing, but I know for a fact, for a fact, if you don't speak in tongues, not you're not 
you know, doomed to hell, okay? All right, false teaching number two is this idea that people can lose their salvation. And this is very, very dangerous because if you keep telling people that you're gonna lose their salvation, people are gonna be like, well, what do I need to do? Like, what do I need to keep doing to make sure I don't lose my faith? But the thing is, is that there's no works that we can do to get to heaven. It's all by Jesus, uh, all repenting of our sins, choosing to follow Jesus and what he's told us to do. We can see clearly that Paul said this in Ephesians chapter two, verses eight through nine, that we are saved by grace through faith. This is not of ourselves so that no one can boast. We can't just like do all these good things and be like, all right, we're good. We're, we're good. We have Jesus and we did all these things. No, Jesus says it's only him that we cling on to him. Jesus talks about our works are like filthy rags. Like they're just, we, we can't clean ourselves up. We have to have Jesus in our lives in order to, to be saved. And then Paul also in the chapter before this states for he chose us, chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. God chose us knowing of what we were going to do before we did it. He predestined us to be adopted into his family and to be his sons and daughters into his adopted family. I mean, he chose us uh, before we, we could even think about it. Jude 1 verse 24 talks about he is the one who keeps us from stumbling and he presents us with this with his glorious presence. Like he's the one that does all the work. We we have we our work is just like I mean it's kind of like a kid trying to clean up compared to like a mom. Mom can really clean up really really good, but a kid like he's going to pick up some stuff and he might, you know, get distracted and make another mess and you just have to like no, it's like you got to get <laughs> you got to clean it all up. I'm not saying all moms are supposed to be cleaning, but I'm just saying that moms are good at cleaning. I mean, I mean, just ask my mom. She's really good at cleaning. But, I mean, if God is strong to save us from our sins, then he's strong enough to keep us from our sins, okay? Uh, the third false teaching that is being taught in the church today is this, this idea that all Christians are going to be healthy and wealthy. And boy, let me tell you, this is not right, okay? <laughs> Uh, they say every Christian is promised riches and amazing health, but it's the total opposite of what the Christian life is all about. All right, the, this teaching is being taught across America, like that God promises us the American dream and that this is what God wants for our lives, and that's not what God says. Okay, this is and, and this is very scary because if we teach people that this is what God's will is, and we have people from different religions and all these all these different people come to to church and they don't get healthy or they don't get wealthy and they end up going through the Christian faith a long time, they're going to be like, this does not work. Like, this is not what they, this is, doesn't make any sense. Why would, like, nobody's getting wealthy all the time. Like, there's people in third world countries that are Christians that would die for the faith and that they, they I mean, they're, like, living in, you know, shacks and stuff like that. Like, like how could that be, be the case for all Christians to be healthy and wealthy if, <clears throat> There's people that are in different countries not living that way. I mean, the Bible is very clear that Jesus' death on the cross doesn't make us, doesn't guarantee us that we're going to be this richy rich dude, you know? Uh, richy rich. I, yeah. <laughs> but it does guarantee is that we are, our sin's been paid for. Jesus has the receipt of all our debts. All our debts that we, I mean, we have accumulated over time and it all has a cost. But the thing is, is that Jesus just puts a red X through that receipt. Boop, boop and it's clear it's done like we are good all we have to do is repent of our sins and we have to be like yo i messed up i i i did these things i've i've done all these wrong things and i can't do it alone i can't get to heaven alone and jesus i need you i need you in my life and i need to follow what you say because i want to live a good life and i want to point people towards you bring it back exactly what Jesus came to do. Matthew chapter one, verse 21 says, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. This is exactly what, okay, let's underline save his people from their sins. Not Jesus came so that people could be wealthy and to be, to be healthy on this earth because this world is corrupt and and it's, I mean, it's, it's cursed. This world has been cursed and we're here just camping out trying to do our work so that we can tell people about who Jesus is so that we can go to heaven and live a perfect life there. I'd rather live a perfect life in heaven than live a perfect life here, just being honest. All throughout the New Testament, it suggests that wealth is actually damaging or it could be damaging uh, than rather to do any good. 
I'm not saying that being rich is wrong, but what I'm saying is it has the power to actually corrupt us if we're not careful. Also, the idea of Christians being healthy is uh, further from the truth in scripture. If this was true, we would all die of natural causes due to getting old. I mean, there's Christians that are dedicated with their lives and they put, they risk their lives and they do everything right. They have, they make sure that their wife and their kids are in God's word and they do everything right. They serve at church and all that stuff. And then they still get sick and they still, and they still die of, you know, cancer and stuff like that. And you're like, like, well, how could that have happened if he, you know, dedicated his life? Like, but the thing is that that's not what Jesus promised. That's not what God promises. He, God promises us eternal life in heaven. He doesn't promise us a, you know, a healthy, wealthy life here. I don't like, like living your best life here is not what Jesus said. Yeah. It doesn't matter how, how many people you're surrounded by, like how many prayers you get. Like if, you know, your whole congregation comes together and somebody has cancer and you're praying over this dude. If God doesn't allow it, if God doesn't want that person to be healed, he's not going to be healed. God has the authority to heal people and not us. We have no authority over that, okay? Um, and this is very damaging if you're teaching people that uh, w that us Christians have the authority to, to heal people as well or to tell people that they're going to be healthy if they just believe enough. Because once they're not healed and they're going to think that they're, they're not a strong Christian and this is just far the way too far from the truth. The number four false teaching that is being preached today is this idea of being uh, that you can decree or to to claim or to speak things into existence and this is not <laughs> like oh man this is a that's a scary one um, I mean some people some Christians believe that they can they have the authority to speak things into they can speak things into existence such as if I just believe I'll be rich, I'll be rich. If I just believe that I'll be this NBA player, I'll, I'll be this NBA player. If I just believe, if I just believe, if I just believe, and it's like, no, like, no, it's, this is life. Like, God has the authority to do things and to put things into existence. God, creates, uh, God can create something out of nothing, but man can't do that as well. It's not like Jesus is our genie. Like, we could just rub, you know, this bottle or whatever we or rubber bible and all of a sudden like things are going to come into existence or things are going to happen like like someone's going to be healed because we have the authority because we spoke it or we're going to be rich because we wrote rubbed our bible like it's not how that works like like god has the authority and god's will is first before our will and what we can do is pray to him uh what we desire and uh what you know what we think that we want and stuff like that but Ultimately, it's up to God to determine whether or not that's what he wants for our lives. And the fifth false teaching that's being preached today in the church is this idea of legalism. And oh man, this one is, this one's a big one for a lot of people. And this is what a lot of Christians stray away from church because they hear this thing about legalism. You can't watch uh, rated R movies or you can't listen to secular music. Uh, you have to make sure you're not wearing jeans at church. You have to wear a dress if you're a girl. Um, if you wear sandals to church, oh boy, you're in trouble. And uh, if you have tattoos, you best bet you're gonna. I mean, might as well just sell your soul to the, to the devil. I mean, it's. I mean, you're screwed. Okay, but also like I remember, you know, Christians from like I had Christian friends when I was younger, and their parents would tell them that that God doesn't want them to watch Spongebob and uh, it's like like what <laughs> like Spongebob and I get Spongebob has some crazy stuff in it like I mean stuff that's a little subtle but to tell them that that's what God says it's like mm, it's a little that pushes it a little bit I'm not questioning your parenting but don't say that that's what God says I mean there's so many other things that other rules I mean you can name a whole bunch of rules that people come up with uh in order to be a true christian you have to follow these rules and that's just not just not the case okay um number six is the total opposite of legalism but it's this idea of hyper grace and that i can do whatever i want as long as i you know believe in jesus and that he died on the cross for me so i can go and sleep with that girl 
or I can go and you know steal this music or I can do all these things like you have to choose to follow Jesus Jesus asks us okay to stop what we're doing to stop uh, being slaves to sin and to choose to follow uh, to choose to follow Jesus um, I mean that's the whole, the whole idea is Jesus coming down to save us from our sins if we need to continue in our sin, it's just like nonsense. I mean, if you're getting saved by somebody, I, I'm coming up with this like on the top of my head, but it would be like if you were to be sold into slavery and you're being a slave to sin, like sin is the master whipping you, right? And and then Jesus comes and he's like, no, I saved you from that sin. Like he takes them and then he you know, abolishes sin. And then you're like, all right, cool, thanks, Jesus. And then all of a sudden you just turn back and you go towards your way, like your own way towards sin again and you're like no 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 jesus is like no come back like why are you going back to the way that you did before like no jesus jesus is like come back don't be a slave to sin okay like jesus gives you the freedom he abolishes sins he takes those chains off okay i went on a rant, uh, rant there but like seriously like a lot of us christians think that this hyper grace meaning like sin is what is awesome but the thing is is that no sin is what causes us to be slaves and jesus is like no you're no slave no more okay romans 6 2 says that are we to continue continue in our sin so that grace may increase of course not that's i mean obvious <laughs> but the last false teaching on this list is this idea of there is no such thing as hell and oh man uh, this one can uh hurt a lot of people if you know because this whole idea of hell is scary to them. But the thing is, is that Jesus spoke about hell more than he spoke about heaven. He over 70 references about hell in the New Testament from Jesus himself. That's not including all the other mentions of hell in the New Testament. I mean, he found it very important. Jesus found it very important to talk about hell because it's a very, very bad place to be. A very, very bad place to be. Uh, he doesn't want any of us to go to hell. He wants us to be in eternity with him. And so that's why he came to talk about it because it's real. I mean, he found it very important to tell us about it. People are able to recall things, uh, weeping and gnashing of the teeth. Uh, even the smallest insect, even like a worm, will not die in hell. And that's kind of a scary thing to think about. I mean, hell exists. And I'm going to go ahead and read Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn there. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury and luxury every day. At his gate was a late, laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Oh man, that sounds like it. It's hot in there because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while in Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. This shows that, that we're going to be able to recall things in, in hell. Like, and that's kind of scary to know, like, you're going to be remembering all the things that uh, you could have done in order not to be in hell. And you're going to remember your family. And you're going to hope and pray that they choose to follow Jesus because of, of all the agony that you're, you're in. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. In that whole verse, you could tell that, I mean, Jesus uses literal names to show that like, 
This is a literal place. Like, hell is a literal place. This is not this whole made-up idea that hell is this analogy and all this stuff. No, this is a place of that's going to happen if you don't choose to follow follow Jesus. This is a place of eternity that will, that you'll spend eternity apart from God. And this idea that we teach people that hell doesn't exist and uh, everybody's going to go to heaven and all this stuff is very, very scary because if we teach people this, then no one's going to find the need to to follow Jesus because it's like, well, if there's not such place as hell, then I can choose to follow Muhammad. I can choose to follow uh, Buddha or whatever. Like they, they see that there's no importance to, to follow Jesus because if everybody's going to heaven, then I mean, what's the point? But Jesus is very clear that he's the way and the truth and the life. And no one goes to the Father except through Him. And we have to remember that. I mean, if you choose to follow, I, have, I mean, I remember I had this this progressive, this progressive teacher or this professor at my college, and I remember she would be like, "We're all gonna, you know, everybody's getting on a bus, everybody gets on a different bus, and we're all going to the same place." And this is very scary that she thought this because it's like, no, there's only one one bus that gets to eternity. It's, I mean. But this whole idea that everybody gets to go to heaven if, as long as they believe in something, like, no, it's not not true whatsoever at all. I mean, this is clearly what the, the Bible says is, is not the case. If you call yourself a Christian and you don't believe in hell, then you don't believe what Christ says. Therefore, you're not a Christian. You're not a real Christian. So if your church is teaching that there's no such thing as hell, run. That being said, those are all the seven false teachings that are being taught in the church today. And... To be honest, why listen to me? Read your Bible because the Bible tells us exactly what is uh, false, false teachings and what is right and what is wrong. The more you read your read the Word, you'll you'll spot false teachings like right then and there. I remember like as like you know a few years back like reading God's Word, but not like reading it, reading it, just like skimming through it, and then you'd I listened to different pastors and stuff like that, and I had no idea that like these pastors were actually teaching false teachings because what they said was good like it felt good it's like yeah like like i feel good i can speak things into existence and all this stuff and then all of a sudden you read the word and you're like oh that's not no it's not what jesus said like i need to repent of that it's very very important that like you read god's word so that you know what truth is if people are talking to all, uh, all these false teachings you, re you need to stay away from it, okay? I'm going to read a verse. 2 Peter 2, 1 through 3 says, But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there were false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who brought them. Bringing swift destruction on themselves, many will follow their deprived conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabrication fabricated stories their condemnation has long been hanging over them and their destruction has not been sleeping boy that's crazy god's given us the like he's telling us like like we need to be aware of this like we need to be aware of the false teachers that are that are out there and teaching all these things that are pointing away from jesus and what jesus came to do jesus came to save us from our sins and so that we can live in eternity with him but yeah, that's it. So if you guys like the video, I appreciate you liking the video and subscribing. Uh, if you find these videos helpful and, you know, this video is probably a little bit longer than usual. But, I mean, there's a lot to cover in the, the whole false teaching thing. Because, I mean, there's a lot of false teachers out there. Like, a lot of people are not leaning towards being atheists. But they're leaning towards, like, progressive Christianity because it feels good. And... Uh, we need to be discerned in what the Bible says because the Bible is truth and nothing but the truth. Um, especially living in this world today and people telling you how they feel about things. It's like, no, like this is what God says and I'm going to follow what God says because, I mean, his, his truth is the foundation of our lives. And it's a solid ground and everything else is just sand because one day you might feel like this and then the other day you feel like something else. So, that being said, thank you guys for for watching and like i said like the video subscribe 
uh, and comment down below is there a video that you'd like to me like me to make about you know like you know what do Christians believe exactly or how do I answer this question if this person's asking me about this about my faith anything like that comment that down below and uh, I'll see you guys next week peace lifting his name on high